Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be starting a new series called Interesting People. This episode we'll be looking at a person that unfortunately fought the Second World War for much longer than he needed to. It is generally accepted that the Second World War ran from 1939 to 1945. For Hiro Onoda, it didn't end until 1974. Wow. Onoda was one of the more famous of the Japanese holdouts. The holdouts were soldiers that after the surrender of Japan stayed in position either due to not believing the authenticity of the surrender or were unaware of the state of war due to lack of communication. Onoda did not surrender in 1945 and subsequently spent 29 years holding out until he was personally given orders by his commanding officers relieving him of duty. One of the last confirmed Japanese holdouts, although apparently two more fought in the Malayan Communist Party all the way up until 19 Onoda was born on the 19th of March 1922 in Wakayama Prefecture. His father was a sergeant in the 4th Cavalry Brigade until he was killed in action fighting in China in 1943. Before Onoda was enlisted in the Imperial Army at age 18, he had worked for the Jajima Yoko Trading Company in Wuhan, China. He went to Nakano School where he trained as an intelligence officer. In December 1944, he was sent to the Philippine island of Lubang, where he would spend the best part of three decades. His commanding officer had given him orders to hamper the Allies at all costs, including destroying the pier and airstrip. The orders also told Onoda under no circumstances could he surrender or take his own life. His commanding officer said, You are absolutely forbidden to die by your own hand. It may take three years, it may take five, but what happens will come back for you. Until then, so as long as you have one soldier, you are to continue to lead him. You may have to live on coconuts. If that is the case, live on coconuts. Under no circumstances are you to give up your life voluntarily. Upon arriving at Lubang, Onoda joined a number of Japanese soldiers that had been sent there previously. A number of officers outranked him and this hampered his attempts to carry out his orders. When only a couple of months later, the Allies attacked the island and its defences were overcome. Onoda and three other soldiers took to the hill. They survived by rationing their rice, eating green bananas in the jungle and occasionally killing local cows for meat. They found their first leaflets notifying them that the war had ended near a cow that they had used for meat. The note read, the war ended on August 15th. Come down from the mountains. The soldiers scrutinised the leaflet, but believed it to be a ploy by the Allies to get them to surrender prematurely. The soldiers carried on their guerrilla attacks and engaged with several shootouts with police and locals. Over the years, a number of flyers were dropped for the holdout, some with photos and letters from loved ones, but they were seen as clever hoaxes by the Allies. After many years of unbearable heat, rats and insects, one of the soldiers decided to give up. In 1949, Private Akatsu ran away without telling Onoda and the others. In 1950, the soldiers found a note from Akatsu saying that he had been greeted by friendly troops and the war was over. Unsurprisingly, Onoda and the others mistrusted the note and thought that Akatsu could not be trusted and their guerrilla campaign carried on with less frequency as to not risk being captured. In 1953, one of Onoda's men, Corporal Shimada, got shot in the leg during a shootout with some local fishermen. Onoda and the other remaining soldier dragged Shimada back to the jungle and nursed him back to health without the use of any medical supplies. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Even though he made a miraculous recovery, Shimada unfortunately died in the following year in a skirmish with a search party. Onoda and his remaining comrade in arms, Kazuka, carried on their guerrilla campaign for a further 19 years. Over the years, a number of search parties were sent out to find the soldiers, but each search was unlucky. On the 19th of November 1972, Kazuka was shot dead by police when the two men tried to burn some local villagers' rice in an attempt to interrupt the enemy's food supply. Thus, Onoda was left on his own. Another couple of years went by until Onoda was discovered by a Japanese man named Nurio Suzuki. Suzuki was an interesting man in his own right, as he was travelling the world searching for the abominable snowman. I think he might be the subject of another video at some point. Onoda told Suzuki that he wouldn't surrender until he was given orders by his commanding officer. After the encounter, Suzuki returned to Japan with photos of the two men as proof. Amazingly, Onoda's commanding officer was still alive and the Japanese government managed to track him down. Good to his words, from 1944, Major Yoshimi Taniguchi, now a bookseller, came to the island to officially pass the order onto Onoda to surrender. 
Amazingly, Onoda surrendered with his rifle still in working condition, 500 rounds of ammunition, several hand grenades and a dagger that his mum had given him to use on himself if he was ever captured. Now, that's not really the type of present I'd want from my mum. Onoda and his fellow soldiers killed around 30 people and wounded another 100 over their 29 years in the jungle, all of which was unnecessary. As far as Anoda knew, the war was still going on and he and his men had committed the violent acts under the belief that Japan was still in a state of war. Because of this, President Marcos gave Anoda a full pardon for the crimes that had been committed attributed to the holdouts. Upon returning to Japan, Anoda was offered a sizeable sum from the Japanese government as back pay for all the years he had served in the army. Anoda adamantly refused any money. Adjusting to life back in the then modern world of 1970s Japan was hard for Onoda and he was unhappy with his newfound fame, so much so that he moved to Brazil to start a cattle farm in 1975. In 1984 Onoda returned to Japan to open up the Onoda Nature School which was aimed at teaching young people, kind of like a modern day Japanese Baden Powell. Onoda did return to the island that he spent most of his life on in 1994 to make a donation of $10,000 to a local school. Onoda never really showed any remorse or regret for the killings attributed to him during his time in hiding, although there is one line from his autobiography that does show some reflection on his time in the jungle. For 30 years I had thought I was doing something for my country, but now it looked as though I had just caused a lot of people a lot of trouble. In 2014, Anoda passed away due to heart failure, quite impressively, at the age of 91. The determination of this man is amazing that against all odds he survived for so long in such a harsh environment, and it must have been scary being isolated not knowing what was going on back at home. I don't think I could have lasted the best part of three decades. Do you reckon you would have survived that long? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, please click subscribe, like and comment. And also, if you could, it would be absolutely amazing if you could share videos on any type of social media. And also, you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at plainly underscore D. Once again, thank you very much for watching.